So let's go ahead and calculate the vibrational partition function Q sub V. And we can just kind of cut to the chase here. It turns out that for a simple harmonic oscillator, Q sub V, or Q uh, superscript V rather, is 1 over 1 minus E to the minus h nu, where nu is our characteristic frequency, uh, of vibration over kt. And if we plot a function of uh, how qv varies with temperature, we can see that qv uh, versus temperature is going to look something like that. And uh, when the temperature is absolute zero, so uh, we've got e to the minus infinity term here, we've seen that that is zero. So it is just 1 over 1, so that we know that uh, when the temperature is zero, uh, then we've only got one accessible state. And as we increase the temperature, what are we going to find? So as we increase the temperature, if we're dividing by a larger number, that's going to make it smaller and negative. If you got e to the smaller and negative, this is going to be a larger and larger thing here. And if we're subtracting away from 1, it's going to make the denominator smaller and smaller. And if we're dividing it into 1, the whole thing is going to be larger and larger. So if we just kind of sketch this functional form, uh, it's going to look something like this. Actually, it's going to go off to infinity as uh, the temperature approaches infinity. So at low temperature, we've only really got one state available, the grain vibrational state. And as we increase the temperature, we just have that ladder of accessible states. And the hotter it is, the more likely we can store energy in one of those higher vibrational states. So how do we calculate this top expression? Well, uh, remember earlier, right, we said that the uh, energy of our simple harmonic oscillator uh, was V plus a half. Uh, times by h nu, where nu is equal to that characteristic frequency you saw in physics, 1 over 2 pi root k over reduced mass. And uh, remember earlier we said that it's completely up to us where we, we set the uh, grain state energy to, and we uh, always opt to set it to zero. And so if we look at this form here, we can see that right now we're going to calculate the v equals zero energy to be 1 half h nu. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to say that sucks, and we would like it to be zero and so we're going to rewrite our expression now. We're going to go ahead and we're going to say E sub V is equal to V times by H nu. And uh, what's this going to do? It's going to make now the grain state one, um, zero energy. And uh, this shouldn't make you feel bad because energy is always relative anyway. We can only measure changes in energy, not absolute energy. Uh, but as we go up to higher and higher quantum numbers, so if V equals one or two, this is now going to be H nu and 2h nu and 3h nu and so on. So really the spacing between the levels hasn't changed, uh, but the zero point energy we've basically just zeroed out. So let's solve the infinite series. So we've got our vibrational partition function is equal to the sum over all those vibrational levels. So I guess we can write that as V of uh, e to the minus the energy of each vibrational level over kt. And we went ahead and we said that that energy level, right, is just equal to uh, v times by h nu. And uh, that allows us to basically set the first term in the series to 1. So uh, when the energy is 0, then e to the 0 is 1. So all the other ones look like uh, this, don't they? So it's e to the minus uh, h nu over kt plus e to the minus 2h nu over kt, right? So with v equals 2, we get that energy there. When uh, v equals 3, we get e to the minus 3h nu over kt, and so on, right? So we've got ourselves a series here. And we can recognize this series uh, can be rewritten. So we can uh, look at e to the minus h nu over kt. And the second term, right, where we're basically doubling that, that's equivalent to squaring this whole thing. So uh, it's e to the minus h nu over kt all squared. And then this last term here that we've written here is e to the minus h nu over kt all cubed. And uh, if we call each one of these x, then we can rewrite it as 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus, you know, da 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 da. So uh, this is an infinite series, and if you've taken some calculus two, you know that this infinite series is equal to one over one minus x, and uh, so uh, that allows us to write then qv is one over one minus x. Well, what was x? x was e to the minus h nu over kt. Pretty clever. 
Now water is a polyatomic molecule, so water has uh, three atoms, so if we calculate the number of vibrations, uh, we should get three. Remember it's a non-linear one, right? If it's linear, then we subtract five away from here, and if it's non-linear, then we subtract six away from here. We've got a bunch of these different vibrations. Uh, we've got one which is a symmetric stretch, where these bonds expand in length. Uh, we've got one that's an anti-symmetric stretch, where one gets longer, and the other gets shorter, and then we've got a bending motion, and it turns out the bending motion has a lower force constant, and uh, let's look at this one here. So these are all called normal modes, and uh, we normally uh, take the molecule's vibrations and we say, look, it can be deconstructed uh, from uh, these simple modes, right? And we can add together these three different um, vibrational modes and reproduce any actual vibration of the molecule in the same way that the uh, guitar string plucks, you know, and you've got an interesting sound, and you can decompose that sound into the sums of the individual sine wave behaviors. So we can go ahead and we can say that the uh, vibration of this one here uh, is about 1600 wave numbers. I think it's uh, 1595. And uh, we can look at this at uh, 25 degrees C. And uh, we can look at just this one vibrational mode and we can calculate QV uh, for this mode, uh, which is the, uh, the bending motion here. So we can really just kind of plug in here. So QV is one over one minus E to the minus energy over KT. So that is H C new tilde, right? So we could use frequency, but if we're using wave numbers, we got to multiply by the speed of light, hopefully in centimeters per second, uh, divide by kT. And if we plug in the values here, I get uh, 1.0005 at 25 degrees C. So if you plug in everything you need, so if you plug in 1595, uh, 3 times 10 to the 10 centimeters per second, Planck's constant, uh, you name it right, 298 Kelvin there, you get 1.005, 1.0005. So that's really insane, right? So what is that telling us? So that's telling us that those spacings between those vibrational levels are insanely wide. And so uh, since you've got the harmonic oscillator uh, with spacing that is exactly equal to the uh, vibrational frequency, I suppose, uh, what you have here is 1600 wave numbers and at room temperature you've got a much smaller fraction of that energy available. So 1.005 is telling you that essentially only five molecules out of what 10,000 are able to access this higher state here. So uh, almost always we are pretty fair in assuming that the ground vibrational state is the only one that's populated. So only five out of 10,000 molecules are actually up here. The other uh, whatever fraction is remaining right are, are down here. And you might imagine as you increase the temperature, right, we would uh, expect to access those higher levels. And we can calculate QV. So QV um, at uh, 100 degrees C. So if we turn it into the steam, um, we get a value of 1.002. So only two in a thousand molecules can access the uh, second uh, vibrational state there. And if we do it at, say, 300 degrees C, and you might think, gosh, that's pretty hot steam, what you find is that QV is 1.02. So only 2% of molecules are able to access this excited vibrational state in water uh, for this kind of mode, even at an extreme temperature, uh, extreme, I guess, for us, of 300 degrees Celsius.